All right, guys, on today's episode, we're gonna talk about the effects of Venturi, and not only that, but also the theory of why certain angles to float bowls are so important. So, to get this whole show started, did your girlfriend leave already? Do you guys wanna see some butt? It's, 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 it's little, but I don't know. Nice, right? Yeah. So I've been dying to get that rear end mocked up inside of the Tercel. The only things that are holding me back right now are it's not prepped. And I realistically need to get it ready to start attaching all the four link items. Cause until then there's no point in me going into the car, cutting it up and start doing things that I don't need to do when I don't even know where they're gonna go. So in the meantime, I went ahead and got rid of all the brackets. The only ones that are left are just the lower links. I'm gonna cut those off right now, grind it down, get this all prepped. So I was trying to get this sandblasted, but I guess they don't sandblast auto parts at JS West. So I'll figure I'll just wire wheel it, sand it down by hand as good as I can, and then give it a good paint. But today's video, hopefully will be a bit more informative. So I recently got my hands on the last A86 magazine, and there was an excellent write-up on how to convert your SR5 rear end over to disc brake. So you guys know me, I already went ahead and got started on getting everything ready for me to be able to convert this over to disc brakes, get rid of the drums, the only downfall to this conversion is your cable e-brake no longer works. You have to either convert over to hydro or figure something out. So let's go over the parts that you need. One Hawk Machine Axle Retainer, part number 32500. Hawk Machine Brake Caliper Holder, part number 31375. A pair of 1994 Mitsubishi Gallant rear rotors. Wilwood Brake Pads, part number 6812E. So the only two things that I'm missing right now are just the Willwood brake calipers and also the little MPT attachments. And I will be posting all the parts that you need somewhere on the, right here. And if any of you guys are interested in actually picking up the magazine itself, you can get it on amazon.com through the Kindle app. And it is called 86 Garage Magazine and it is in issue number three. So I pull both the axles out and they look to be in good shape. None of the splines look like they have any warping on them. You can just see all the rust build up on the race and bearing, more than likely from it being married to the axle housing for the past 30 years, more than likely. The bearings still spin and they don't seem to have much of a wobble to them, but I'm still gonna swap them out. It's because it's one of those annoying things to get to and since I have it out right now, might as well get it pressed out. I'm actually gonna be going to CM Auto House on Monday, which is another great YouTube for A86 and Corolla content if you guys are interested. He's gonna be pressing out the bearings and installing the new ones for me. I was gonna weld up the diff, but it looks a little complicated. Let me show you. So I've welded me up a few diffs before and mostly they've been IRS diffs. Never realistically opened up a straight axle rear end. Usually when you open it up, you look inside the carrier, there's at least some sort of window of opportunity for you to go in and weld up the spider gears. But this one has none. So I went online and started looking up SR5 diffs and I couldn't find a picture of just an SR5 diff. The only ones that I could find were the open GTS ones. And they all had that window where you could weld the spider gears together and put in a little plate. So in my head, I started thinking, hmm, this almost looks like a LSD unit. So I went to Google and I started typing in SR5 6.3 LSD and nothing came up. So I just did the simplest test that you could, put my finger in one of the axle slots, applied a bit of pressure, turned the pinion, did it spin the right way or the wrong way? and it spun the wrong way. So this thing's an open diff. So I have to remove the retainer caps, I have to basically remove the ring gear and open up the actual carrier to get to the ring gears. And if I'm gonna be doing all that, I might as well just buy a spool. So for now, the diff is gonna remain on my workbench until I can get my hands on a spool. Luckily, Wear Performance has an actual spool that's meant for this car. It's 200 bucks though, so that's gonna have to wait a little bit. But in the meantime, I have the actual axle housing which I can start working on, get it mounted up and prepped. But I am gonna have to make sure I get the diff ready before I can get a drive shaft made. Also, I've been looking in every nook and cranny of the internet trying to find a manual rack and pinion for an A86. I cannot find one. So I thought in my head, why don't I just get one for a KE70 or a TE72 or KP61 Starlet? Fuck, those all seem to fit the description. But I got myself one. So I found 
this little nice unit on eBay for a hundred bucks, right? Right, seems cool. It also came with boots, tie rod, enters. For a hundred dollars shipped from like Malaysia or Singapore, I don't even know. So lo and behold, it gets here. I get all excited and I'm thinking in my head, wow, I finally have a manual rack. My life is great. It's for front mounted knuckles, not rears. Luckily, I do have an old power steering unit, which I think it's already depowered. The only problem is, is this does not fit it. Two little splines, two small diameter. What do I do? So again, I will begin my search through the internet and I will find a manual rack and pinion. Even if it costs me an arm and a leg. But anyways, let's finish cutting up this rear end. All right, so the lower four link bracket, gone. Now I just need to grind these little stubs off, clean up the whole entire axle housing. We can start installing these bad boys right here. So this is gonna be the new four link bracket. Also has a coilover mount on it. Three low positions, nice, nice, nice. That's not where it's actually gonna sit. I actually have to go. You can hardly see anything in here. But I basically have to cut off that whole entire bottom pan of the floor, make a new floor, and I have to basically make a new set of rails that are gonna go off of that one all the way in. I have to cut that right there. It's just, also a cool other thing, my Piper Cross air filter came in. Doesn't look too bad, huh? Almost could pass off as a set of ITBs. Well, this week's video is gonna be super short. It was just a quick little update video on what I got going on. Obviously, you can tell I'm stressed. So I guess the best way to describe it is you're putting together a puzzle made up of different puzzle pieces and you're hoping it's gonna make a finished picture at the end. I hope next week's video is gonna be a bit more interesting. At that point, I am gonna be cutting the floor, so we're gonna be seeing some cool bead roller action. Anyways, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. This is IO Garage. Thank you guys for watching.